Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk to you about inclusion and diversity in open source projects and uh, why we think it's necessary and it uh, yeah, improves uh, the open source movement. Uh, I'm Jan, I'm a designer at Nextcloud. I'm Camila, I'm a software engineer at Nextcloud uh, on desktop client. Uh, hi, and I'm Charlie and I'm a UX designer and I work at Wikimedia Germany. And before I show you the numbers, <laughs> um, Let's start with Ada Lovelace. Many of you would probably say she's the first computer programmer, even before computers existed. And in the early days, doing software development was, a, was like a typical woman's job. So how come that since the 80s, the number of women has declined a lot in, uh, in, in, the, in, yeah, in, in tech? Uh, especially compared to like other typically male-dominated um, fields like maybe medicine or law. In tech, it's still around 15 to 20 percent of women. And if we look at open source, the number that you just already saw is even lower. It's between 1 and 11 percent, depending on which studies you look at. And maybe you're thinking, that's weird. Open source is open. It's... Uh, it should be more inclusive and it's easier to get into. There's already a community. You don't have to show a degree. You just can, you can contribute to whatever level uh, you have. But clearly that's not the case. And uh, in last year, GitHub did a big open source survey to find out more about uh, the contributors of their platform. And of the, all the respondents, 95% were men and just 3% were women. So this falls in the number of the 1 to 11 percent, and it's not looking very good. And maybe you're thinking, OK, so why do we need to focus on improving uh, the number in open source projects and not in general and uh, put our focus there? Because uh, in the same study, half of the contributors uh, that uh, filled out the survey um, said that their work on open source helped them with their current role. So that means they managed, or it helped them gain expertise and reputation that helped them with their current position in tech right now. So what we learned from this is that if we improve the inclusion and diversity in open source projects, it'll probably help in, uh, improve the diversity in tech in general. Yeah, and it's uh, not only uh, open source code, um, but it's uh, very similar yeah, in the content. Uh, as you could say, for example, this is uh, in Wikipedia. Um, this is from the page uh, on gender bias on Wikipedia. On Wikipedia. Uh, and uh, yeah, it shows very clearly that yeah, Wikipedia editors are predominantly male. And as such, uh, of course, the articles and the representation of the knowledge will be primarily focused on things that men are interested in. And because Wikipedia is this, yeah, the sum of human knowledge, there's this shift or this, this imbalance that is, yeah, not really how things happen. So, yeah, this is also summed up in the, in the Wikipedia page on racial bias on Wikipedia, which exists just like gender bias, where they say that the content suffers from the bias of its editors, which are mainly technically inclined, English-speaking, white-collar men living in majority Christian developed countries in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's not only uh, men, women, it's, it's all these other uh, different factors which play into this. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's even only the tip of the iceberg, so to say, because this main group or this majority excludes like a whole bunch of other people, like people with different gender identities, different sexual orientations, different skin color, different abilities, different ages, but also even different skill level and technical affinity. So at the very, yeah, at the very least, what is important to the open source and free software movement is new people joining it. So if we make it hard in these ways that we don't even notice it's hard to get involved in, then yeah, basically we will slowly all get older and then at some point the movement could die out. So um, instead of, uh, yeah, Doing that in, in these ways we don't even notice, uh, we can just make the whole movement grow bigger and also by that get, get new people involved with yeah, very diverse view, viewpoints. And uh, yeah, if you also take it to the, uh, just the commercial side or the financial side, um, there's several studies by, for example, Harvard Business Review, McKinsey, Stanford Business and, and so on that 
uh, diverse teams simply work better. Their, their bottom line, their, their literal financial bottom line is better. Like only one woman in the board of directors uh, or something like that like increases the, the financial bottom line of a company. And so that alone uh, should, should tell you that it's, that it's better to have a diverse team because of course, if you have a diverse team, then you also have, can have a more diverse audience because you're producing for yeah, more different experiences. Um, and um, yeah, that's it's just a, a, a better you, you have a bigger a bigger audience as that. Um, and yeah, how we can improve, uh, Camila will tell us. Yeah. So to start with, um, let's look at some numbers. So the Opsos survey from 2017 from GitHub points out that 25% of women versus 15% of men are more likely to encounter rudeness, name calling, and welcoming language or content. And so 45% of people witness it, and 16% of people experience this. Name calling, 20% witness it, and 5% experience it. So the problem here is with the communication, how people are interacting on uh, issues, on pull requests, and why is this important? Because 20% of people who experience it, they stop contributing to the project. They leave. So if you don't pay attention to the communication in a project, it's uh, really damaging to the project itself. But one good point about communication is that everyone in the project can contribute to improve and fix it. And you can do that by having a code of conduct. So for instance, there are, well, there are a bunch of projects out there who provide a template for a good code of conduct, like Contributor Covenant does that. Uh, so you can just uh, change the template and add it, this to your repo. Um, so besides having a code of conduct, it's really important that everyone in the project is aware of it. Communicate, it's very important. Um, so this is from a talk from Una Kravitz. Um, in a, she gave this talk about getting uh, designers involved in open source. And so this is something else that you can do in your project that is to have feedback guidelines. Just some guidelines about how you can improve your communication and be nice to people in your project. So I'll just highlight some points here. So I think it's really important to be specific. Sometimes you are talking about the problem someone else codes and this is very logic to you but not to everyone involved in the discussion. So it is good to um, say why you are pointing out what or saying what you're saying in the discussion. Um, it's also very important to avoid exaggerations, hyperboles. This can really be demotivating and maybe even escalate the discussion. And so besides code of conduct and having a good feedback uh, guideline on how people should communicate, um, Una Kravitz also looked into some open source projects and she noticed that all the projects that had uh, good documentation, good website and good guidelines had more female involved. And so meaning in the open source survey too also pointed out that uh, people from minority groups, they really care about documentation and good guidelines. So a good documentation increases diversity and diversity increases documentation because people who from the minority who is contributing to your project, they are going to also improve the documentation, guidelines, code of conduct. Uh, another uh, way of improving uh, diversity is to make sure you label your issues. Uh, now, uh, GitHub has standardized that with a good first issue. So you can label it, making sure that people who start uh, in the project know where to start with. So there are a few projects out there who can help you with it, like uh, up for grabs, you can submit your project there, so um, people who are starting can look for your project and the issues they can start to work on. And there is your first PR, who is a Twitter account, that is a Twitter account, where they are constantly um, putting, um, uh, updating the timeline with starter issues from GitHub. So they post on their Twitter uh, good first issues. Um, another 
uh, interesting fact is about uh, that women are more likely to seek out help directly, 29% versus 13% of women, they look for people they already know well. So I was actually surprised to see these numbers because I do that myself all the time to ask for help and ask questions. I always look for people I already know. Uh, so that's another reason for us to have uh, to work in open source university because we want to create a safe place where everyone who is starting can look for help to get started in open source. So these numbers, uh, these facts, they really show that this is really important. This is just a fact. Thank you. Um, so two years ago in October, we thought about what we could do to help uh, people from uh, underrepresented groups join open source projects and open source projects diversify. And so we came up with uh, doing a hackathon. We called it Open Source Ladies back then. And um, we invited different open source projects. We had uh, LibreOffice, Nextcloud, MediaWiki, Mozilla, and uh, others um, come and join us and we had participants and um, they were we had a whole day where they got uh, um, basically personally mentored and um, and this worked out so well that they both groups asked us if we could continue this in some way and so what we did afterwards is we created a meetup it's now called open source diversity because open source ladies was a bit restricting and that's not what we wanted um, and we meet up once a month in Berlin and um, anyone with an open source project can come and uh, get help on how to diversify it people who are just interested in joining or contributing to something have a space where they can talk to someone directly and uh, get involved in a in like a in an in a low barrier easy way um, yeah that's our goal with that. And we're not the only ones with these initiatives. In Bangalore, India, um, there's a group called Diversifying Open Source, and they do something similar where they help encourage open source projects um, to be metaverse and help people join them. And um, there, are, Mozilla does monthly calls in the, uh, about diversity and inclusion in open source projects. So you can just join there and uh, talk about codes of conduct or how to make your event uh, more inclusive. Yeah, and uh, there's uh, other initiatives that you probably know. Um, two of them uh, are Rails Girls Summer of Code and Outreachy. They're both projects which are similar to a Google Summer of Code, uh, which uh, help diversity in open source. So you should consider yeah, participating there as an organization or donating or, um, yeah, uh, just spreading the word mainly. Uh, it's it's very cool. Like with Nextcloud, for example, we participate there often, and it's uh, really super cool. Like the the participants uh, we get from that, and um, there's uh, for conferences. Uh, there's there's two good resources. Uh, one is called speakerinnen.org. Um, it's a platform for uh, women speakers where you can uh, register and you can if you organize a conference you can find women speakers. And um, for participants, there's diversity tickets where you as a conference can submit your event. Uh, and um, as a person from an underrepresented group, you can you can look through the events and uh, see uh, where there's an event, for example, which offers reduced tickets or tickets for free or accommodation and travel uh, support. Um, yeah, so should support your uh, or submit your events there if you organize any events. Uh, and because uh, we were collecting all these resources and uh, um, yeah, some are easier to find, some are more difficult to find, we decided to make it a website. Uh, it's called opensourcediversity.org um, and you can go there and uh, you see, for example, Contributor Covenant, Up for Grabs, your first PR and the other ones that we mentioned are also on there and uh, yeah, we're kind of making it as kind of a hub uh, for uh, the open source diversity and inclusion uh, people to to communicate and to to share their their knowledge and to just like strengthen that uh, movement basically because for example also as a um, as a designer because I'm also uh, a, as a designer a, a a person who's not uh, or where there's originally not that many people in the source, com source community uh, I see that uh, both design and diversity are two important where where um, where the open source community is behind. So 
in, in uh, comparison to proprietary projects. So those two are really some important things that we have to invest in now uh, if we don't want to lag behind like five, ten years from now. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you and join our community. Yeah, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? Just raise your hand, Andal. Thank you. Uh, great topic um, and, and great discussion. I was wondering um, if you could provide a little bit more information about the success of the rename from open source ladies to open source diversity. I know a number of smaller groups who are also thinking about renaming theirs as well for the same reasons as you, uh, but there's concerns from their membership that it will either dilute their message because they're not focusing on a specific, you know, uh, disadvantaged group or disenfranchised group, or um, it will encourage infiltration from uh, non-desirables. So I was just wondering what your, your background and experience was. Um, we don't have any non-desirables to be diverse everyone should be able to participate. We just want to create a, um, like a welcoming space for people who are um, us yeah. um, usually, like we pointed out in the um, GitHub survey, um, maybe encounter more rudeness or uh, this kind of behavior. And um, we, we often got like messages from people who maybe felt they didn't belong in this underrepresented group and asked if they could join because they were working on something or wanted to support the initiative. And of course they can. So we wanted to open up the name because it was never just aimed at one specific group. But yeah. Uh, just to compliment. So you just switched the name, right? It's very recent. So we don't have numbers yet. And, uh, but yeah, uh, that's what Charlie said. Um, so we just want to make sure it's clear the message that is for everyone, not only women. Um, and the non-desirable people, I believe, you, I guess you meant like um, people who are, uh, might be sexist or, yeah. I guess, uh, but yeah, I mean, so far you didn't have any bad experience. <laughs> Sorry, uh, so far you didn't have, I think, any really bad experience, but we should keep eye on make sure the community is healthy, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you meant uh, like what uh, Jan said before, like the, the white male from the Northern Hemisphere in a sense. Those are also welcome. What, who's not welcome are obviously rude people. That, that, yeah, that's what Camilla was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that should go for every community. Yeah. Okay, thank you again. Okay, thank you Big so much. Applause. Thank you.